Hey everybody, today we're doing another video in my three killing licks video series, which you guys seem to be liking. If you want more of these videos, let me know in the comment section below. Today, we're looking at one of my favorite tenor sax players, Hank Mobley. We're going to be looking at two of Hank's solos, one from Remember and one from his original composition, This I Dig of You. All right, let's jump right in it. Okay, so I'll play you the first lick, and then I'll talk about how to use the concepts that Hank used and how to put it back into our own improvisation. These first two licks are from his solo, Remember. So this is a great backdoor to five lick that is made up of really two different things. One being the blues, and two being a common five to one lick. First off, the blues part. This phrase is a common blues motif that uses a walk up from the flat third and then goes to the fifth and then usually resolves that flat third to our natural third. This can be played over both dominant and major chords. Hank uses the minor part of this walk up to lead to our flat seventh of our dominant chord, being G flat seven. So the next part of this lick uses a great five to one lick and can be used over a variety of different chords. The way it's played now works really well over obviously backdoor dominance, but also just five to one in whatever key you're playing over. In this case, we're playing in the key of A flat. You can also make this lick into an altered sound by starting it off the sharp nine or the flat third of our dominant chord being E flat. Then you can also combine the two. Here's a lick that uses the same ideas that Hank used, but over a 2-5-1 in A-flat. So our next lick sounds like this. This is a great minor 2-5 lick and uses a sound that's not usually used over this type of chord progression. So this lick is based on the diminished scale, which sounds like this. Now the sound of this scale goes over a dominant 13 flat 9 sound. Some people might not like this sound because it has the major third of the one chord that our five chord resolves to. The minor third of our one chord is A flat since we're going from C7 to F minor 7, but when we use our dominant 13 flat 9 sound, it has that A natural in it. So that's where sometimes that clash happens. But for me, when I hear this, it sounds good. So if it sounds good, then it is good. Now, because this is using the diminished scale, we can move this lick in minor thirds and it'll still work. Or you could play something like this, where you take part of the lick and then you resolve it. Here's a lick that uses the same ideas that Hank uses, but in a slightly different way. So our last lick is from his solo over his original tune, This I Dig of You, and sounds like this. So 
So there's a lot in this lick to unpack. First off, he is implying other chords over a pretty much static B flat major vamp. He's pretty much implying a 251 over this vamp. So if you're ever playing over this song or playing over other diatonic vamps, just remember that you don't have to play just that chord sound. You can imply other chords in that key. Secondly, he plays this weird A major triad over his implied F7. This is weird because the A major triad has an E in it, which is the natural seventh of our dominant chord, but dominant chords usually have a flat seven in it. I think this works because the natural seven could be looked as a leading tone to F. Or you could think about this lick as part of the bebop scale because it has our natural seven, then it has the flat seven, and then finally that flat seven resolves to the third of our one chord. So if we're thinking about this as it's a leading tone, then what we can do is instead of making it go up, we can make it go down. I just used a different inversion of our A major triad and then made the natural seven go to the flat seven. And then lastly, I resolved to one. Or if we thought about this as kind of a part of a pseudo bebop scale, then we can connect it to some tonic dominant language and it'll work. Here's a lick that uses Hank's ideas from what we've been talking about in a slightly different way. Thank you guys so much for watching this video about three killing Hank Mobley licks. Hank is such a melodic tenor sax player and he really has a good grasp of how to take things that might seem not normal theoretically and make them sound awesome because of the way he knows how to resolve lines. Try to take some of these concepts that we talked about and apply them in your own playing and try to create lines using what we talked about. The best way to get good at something is just to do it. So if it doesn't sound good right away, that's okay. Keep trying, revise it, look at what Hank does, compare it back to the masters, and eventually it will work out. If you'd like to see more Hank Mobley licks, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching, and remember to always keep swinging.